You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Kathleen Panning, who has been an ordained minister for over 35 years, brings her experience to your ministry, be it energizing your staff or working through conflicts with your faith community. So now, please welcome the host of A Flame Ministry, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Welcome to Flame Ministry. We are here, uh, as always, on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And I'm your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. This is a show where we talk about issues and things that are of interest and of value to faith leaders. So it's for those who are professional faith leaders, pastor, priest, rabbi, imam, deacon, cantor, whatever your title may be, um, as well as those who are leaders in some sort of a faith community. And what that means is um, that we talk about um, sometimes trying to make sense of the differences and un- misunderstandings between faiths and dispel some of those misunderstandings. And at other times we talk about things that are kind of common to all faiths because they're common to us as human beings. And uh, the latter is what we're going to work on today. It's a topic that most of us know something about, but maybe not as much as we think we do. Um, It's When I went through seminary, I was taught that um, how to put together a good message how to and how to communicate that, to relay that message, at least a hopefully one that would be a good message for other people, how to communicate, how to share the story of my faith, to talk. But there's another part to communication, and oftentimes we focus on what I'm doing now, the talking part. But the other half of it is listening. Many of us think we're really good listeners, but that may not always be so, because listening is more than just hearing. Yeah, so often we have people. Yeah, let me back up. I grew up with the idea of of often having um, a radio in those days on in the background. And there was music playing or words. Sometimes today it's um, something on our phone. We have earbuds in, listening to music while we're working and doing something else. But it's not really listening to the music. It's it's not paying attention to the words. It's not really paying attention to what's on the news. You know, every once in a while, just maybe focusing in a little bit of it and then going back to what we were doing. Because the truth of the matter is, we can only focus our attention on one thing at a time. We talk about multitasking, but that's really uh, an oxymoron because we can only really think about and focus on one thing at a time. So if I'm listening to music in the background and trying to do some other work, I'm only hearing the music. I'm not really listening to it. I'm not putting my attention there. I am not paying attention to the words and the meanings. I'm not paying attention to how that, how I feel about that and the feelings that are inside of me. The same thing in verbal communications with other people. Um, many times when we're, quote, listening to a conversation, most of what we're doing is trying to figure out what we're going to say in response. Our brains go into what we agree with, what we don't agree with, and how we're going to respond to the other person. 
instead of what it is that we're doing, what it is that we're feeling, what it is that that other person is really saying, and what they're feeling, what they are trying to communicate. Listening is about paying attention to what the other person who is in front of us is saying, what they are trying to communicate, and really trying to understand it from their perspective, not from mine, not from uh, some mythological point of view, uh, but from their perspective. So, you know, in ministry, whether you're a faith leader uh, as a professional or in uh, as a position of leadership in your faith community, listening to the people around us is really, really important. Um, whether and today, especially because we don't have as much of the face-to-face interaction as we're used to. But it's vital for building long-term relationships and building rapport. Um, if we don't really, really listen to someone, we end up talking at each other. You know, when you walk down the street or pick up the phone and um, you speak to somebody and say, oh, how are you today? What do we mostly say? Oh, I'm fine. You know, oh, nah, not so bad. It's an okay day. You know, we give some platitude in response but underneath that there's the other things of what we're really feeling and what we're thinking and so when somebody says something oh I'm fine and you hear a little something in their voice that says uh maybe not really something like how are you really feeling what's really going on you know or it sounds like you might be a little bit sad or under the weather today or you know whatever you can pick up from how you see the person if it's on zoom or in person or what you hear in their voice that's part of listening is picking up on what somebody else is saying and there's so much of what's going on in today's world where we're not listening to each other people are feeling like they're not being heard and that is fueling a lot of the problems that we're seeing uh, whether it's in individual families uh, in faith communities even in our nation um, the things that are breaking down in the communication where we don't take the time to try to understand somebody else's position, somebody else's circumstance. doesn't mean we have to agree with them, but it's important to take the time to really listen and to try to understand. That gets challenging at times when somebody's words are angry or hurtful and when they come back at us with certain kinds of messages, but it's important to remember that's what they're thinking doesn't necessarily mean anything about me as the listener. And we're going to talk more about that as we go through this show today as to some ways to key in on what that means. But the first thing to know is listening is about being open to hearing another person's perspective. It's not about my planning my response. It's not about me trying to figure out, oh, well, like two little kids where one says something angry and the other one responds back and then it's, oh, well, you started it. Uh Uh-uh, that's not listening, not listening at all. And in most conversations and communications, we don't really listen. So it's time for us to take our first break. This is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning. Please stay tuned because I've got a lot more to share with you about listening. 
Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at SoarWithKatie.com. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Welcome back. This is a Flame Ministry. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for the show, and um, we're talking about listening. And I actually have with me today a very special guest. She is Renee Kamstra, um, one of the world's top speakers and business coaches focusing on communication, leadership, personal development, corporate growth, and sales for entrepreneurs and uh, corporate executives. And she works with clients in 28 different countries and leaders like Tony Robbins and Sally Sally Hogshead, which is how I met her, and many more. Um, And she has a very long resume, but I want to get right into a long and powerful resume, I might add, right into this because... Her, one of her expertises is in communication and listening, which is our topic today. So, Renee, um, I gave a bit of an introduction to start with about listening and how important that is. But give us your definition of what it means to be a good listener. So I'm going to be a little bit long here because I want to tell you what has happened for me. I have been on many, many stages all over the world, and I would always ask people, you know, um, what do they think? Are they good listeners? And many times I would get about 50% of the audience that will put up their hands until I define it. And what I mean with listening is if you listen, you are totally open to hear the other person, to listen to what they say. And the other thing is, in the time that they talk, you do not think about any response. Because many times people are already thinking about the comeback, and they kind of already start talking when you don't even finish your sentence. That's not listening. The other thing which is not listening, and I think you mentioned this before, uh, Kathleen, is when people can regurgitate back to you exactly what you said but it had absolutely no impact on them they think mm-hmm. that is listening that's not listening mm-hmm. because you haven't really assimilated and acknowledged what the other person needs wants or anything like that so that's how I define listening and, and so we've done studies all over the world and we found that really the percentage of people that listen really listen might be between 17 and 23 percent, which is really why I think there's so much um, stuff going on in the world right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, 17 to 23 percent, that's, 
a little scary in in many respects, but it also means listening is a skill we can learn. And so that means there's a lot of potential there. Would that be something that... Yeah, yeah. Um, So hopefully you can help us be a little better listeners today. Um, What's the impact that you have seen um, in, you do a lot of work with teams in the corporate environment, but in faith communities, there are also a lot of committees and staff relationships and relationships within um, faith communities that easily get skewed and out of whack when people don't feel heard. How, what's the impact that you see of pe- when people don't feel heard? Well, I think this is one of the big things that so many say is that they don't feel heard. Well, this um, the impact there can be divorce. Mm-hmm. It can be um, off because what they are saying is not right. So um, mm-hmm. if, if, your, if your people would like to do a little exercise, I'm going to show them how we can actually do this right after the break. So yeah. Give them a little exercise to do. Okay, because yes, we do have to take a break here. Um, and this is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. You're listening to A Flame Ministry. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host. And stay tuned because Renee is going to help us with an exercise on listening. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Renaissance Woman Trailblazer Maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe Tashandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. We're back, and this is a flame ministry. 
I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host, and I'm talking today with Renee Kamstra, um, an expert in uh, commun- coaching uh, business leaders and uh, top speakers and uh, people of all different backgrounds on communication, leadership, personal development, uh, working with teams and to have a more cohesive, effective and committed relationship. And we're talking about communication today. And Renee, before the break, you were uh, saying that you're going to take us through a little exercise uh, to help us learn how to be a little better listeners. And I think people hopefully can grab a piece of paper and a pencil or something like that uh, if they need that for the exercise. So um, what is it that we can do to do this? So... What I would like people to do, and this is vague instruction, let me just tell you this up front, is I want for you to draw four lines. So I'm saying it's vague because people will always ask me, so how do I have to draw the lines? I don't care how you draw the lines. Draw four lines. And then Kathleen, if you can play with me when I ask okay. some questions you and maybe the producer, that would be amazing because then people can really experience it, okay? So, mm-hmm. once you've drawn the four lines, I want to ask you, what is it that you see? What I see? Um, I see, well, I could see two lanes of a highway, depending upon mm-hmm. how you look at this. Um, it could be um, kind of railroad tracks, because I drew horizontal lines um, on here. Um, it could be um, just plain four lines <laughs> where I could write different categories of things, different uh, kind mm-hmm. of cells on things. Uh, it could be all kinds of different things, whatever you want to make it up to be. Right. Flower beds. And if you drew those if you drew those lines like a box, it could be a square, it could be, right. inside could be a present, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Your lines could also be still uh, like a music bar where you could write music yes. on. It sure. could be a step ladder if you just see them go up, right? Mm-hmm. So there's so much that you can see. Now, which one of those answers is right? <laughs> All of them. That's the point. Yeah. And that's the point in communication. If we have a set idea of how it needs to look or what it is, and we can't even hear somebody else who has a different opinion, now we're telling them they are wrong and we are right, there's no way to go. Mm-hmm. Now it yeah. becomes a big fight. And that has just no point. Instead of that, if we can ask or listen to what they say and expand our minds and not assume that they are trying to go against us. Assumptions, making assumptions is very dangerous. So I really want you guys to hear the word. Do not assume what others need. Ask why it is that they say this or see this or feel this. Because know that there can be many different perspectives around the exact same thing. Yeah, one of my, uh, when I was on internship, uh, my supervisor uh, was working with a couple in a premarital counseling setting and wrote out the word assume on a piece of, you know, a newspaper, graph, uh, chart paper type thing. A-S-S-U-M-E. to assume makes a ass out of you and me. So uh, I've always remembered that. And it, it's true because we're often wrong. <laughs> often wrong right. on that. That is also why when a boss would give somebody a, a task, we assume that that person will think exactly like us. And if the task come back not exactly looking the way that we wanted it, um, we, we assume that our people were not good at working. Instead of um, maybe giving more clear instructions or instead of the person that gets the work asking more questions 
so that they know, okay, I totally understand what my boss wants. Mm-hmm. And in um, faith, I, I want to. Well, sorry. Well, in faith communities, don't always have tasks from a boss or something like that, but it's more of um, clarifying how somebody views something. Um, You know, when you're in a committee, why would we want to go this way instead of, you know, why would we want to do a certain thing rather than do it a different way? Uh, So it's more values driven or perspective of how things might work best and that's where clarification really needs to come in exactly. is that making any sense other, oh absolutely the the next thing about that is it's not just that clarification needs to come in it is also that we need to allow our brains to expand because one person might think one way, number two and number three is going to think a little bit different, or mm-hmm. there is no feeling that you want to change, and and that um, you know can totally be mm-hmm. a big challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and those are many of the challenges that faith leaders run into in um, in faith communities. Um, at least that's been my experience. You have not just two perspectives, but about as many perspectives as the people you're talking with um, in a exactly. committee. And now it becomes ego driven, mm-hmm. or power driven. Or yeah, exactly, and and. You know what is another big thing when it comes to com- uh, communication in groups is that you know as well as I know people do not want change. Yeah. And and unfortunately, life is changing every day. And so, mm-hmm. for us to be really effective, it is effect- it, It's more effective if we are open to. Stick with what we know works, but maybe start bringing in some new in order to make it better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I th- what you just said is really important because people who are resistant to change often like will change if they see a continuity that's You're not dumping the baby out with the bathwater, but you see a continuity with the way things have been. But we have to take another break. There's so much more to talk about here. Uh, This is A Flame Ministry. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host, and Renee and I are coming right back, so stay tuned. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. 
Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BB. Global Network. Welcome back. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for Aflay Ministry. We are here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And my guest today is Renee Kamstra. She is one of the world's top speakers and business coaches and focuses a lot on communication, leadership, personal development and how all those things impact corporations and individual relationships. And today we're talking about how all of that affects and impacts faith communities and us as faith leaders. Uh, Renee, we've been talking a bit about communication in a um, larger setting where it might be a group of people, but there's so much more time today where we're spending um, at home uh, or with a much smaller group of people, with family and the personal relationships that are with that because of uh, the effects of the pandemic and many more people working from home. This is where communication can get really tough sometimes. What are some ways to help with those close relationships and our communication and our listening? All right. Ooh, you opened the Pandora box that I love. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Think about it. We are all at home, right? And we have, we've been used to maybe be out of the home, working most of the time, and now we are together and if we don't understand that communication is most of the time listening and not assuming that who is talking to you is trying to put you down, <laughs> that could really go a far way. So let me, let me explain what I'm talking about. So what is happening these days a lot, because I deal with a lot of people that have, uh, that's going through this pain, is that... People assume when, you know, uh, when somebody married them or is with them that they know exactly what their partner wants <laughs> and needs. However, none of no. them are psychic readers, right? Mm-hmm. And because mm-hmm. of that, they will go in with saying what they want to say or maybe they say it, said it three or six or ten times already. And they repeat themselves often again, and they assume the other party just does not want to do it. However, Mm -hmm. that might absolutely not be true. It might just be that the other party hears it different, because we have different personalities. And we Mm -hmm. hear words differently because we grew up in different circumstances. And so that assumption then will go and bring self-talk like, well, they don't love me anymore. Look how stupid they are. How can I stay with them? I, I hate this person who never hears what I have to say. That's going on inside the head. So I'm now talking about self-talk. Now, mm-hmm. Kathleen, you and I know when we are self-talking like this, when we try to talk to this person that we have all these negative thoughts, thoughts about, we um, can uh, hear them well. No, no, no. Right? We cannot hear them well. We will not even give them a chance. We assume that they are just not willing to spend that time with us or to see our point of um, thought. And so... That's where the big trouble comes in. And that's one exercise that I really, really can recommend is if you know you consistently have bad thoughts about somebody else, remember, where focus goes, energy flows. 
So a bad thought is creating bad energy. And if you talk to somebody with an energy that sounds already like you're really angry at them, oh my gosh, who would want to listen to that, right? Mm-hmm. So a beautiful thing to do, and I have seen this work, oh, I'm, I've, I've probably seen this hundreds of times, is where I would tell my clients, okay, make a point of no matter what, you write three good things about this person that you have these feelings about. So what happens? They get a book, they write three things like, okay, I love the way they smile. I love um, the way, you know, they handle the kids. Um, uh, The way they just uh, help me by always taking out the garbage. Whatever that would be, write three (laughs) nice things about them every day. What that does is it forces you to focus on anything that is good. Mm-hmm. And again, where focus, so, uh, where focus is, the energy will flow, right? So where focus goes, energy flows. And that will totally change the energy. Within, I promise you, within a week or two, no matter how bad that relationship was, it will get a lot better. Mm-hmm. And so we are now saying this about uh, romantic relationships. Um, this happens also with children. Teenagers, by nature, do not like to share. So if you're going to ask them, so how are you? I'm fine. Mm-hmm. What did yeah. you do today? Uh, what a good day. That's it. They're not going to talk to you. Don't assume that because they do that, they are rude with you. It is just that's what happens to them. And, and if you could actually leave them and let them know that you are always there to talk with them and um, start doing the same exercise with them where you pretty much say, I love that at least my teenager still comes to say hello. Um, I love that he still comes to eat at the table, blah, blah, blah. What is going to mm-hmm. happen? If your focus is going on the positive thing, and that positive thing is going to grow, I guarantee it. (laughs) So that's number two. Number three would be, uh, when we talk to somebody, we never want to go with, um, you made me angry because of this, or you always leave your clothes on the bed or on the floor. And I hate that. It is mm-hmm. always, it, you could always rather go with something where you always start with, I feel you are changing it around from an accusation right. to a, this is who I am and why it's hurting me or why it's bothering me. I feel um, that you think I must be your maid if I always see the clothes on the floor. I know you never asked me to pick it up. But I, uh, it doesn't make me feel good to see it there, for argument's mm-hmm. sake, right? And yeah. if we go to something like that, you really smooth it. And if you then listen to why they have done it or um, and then just really listen and acknowledge, then it's good. The fourth point here, Kathleen, there's one more point and then I'm going to keep quiet so you can ask. Okay. The, story. the fourth point is when somebody is there and you don't like what they did, as soon as you say, why did you do this? Tell me what do you feel when I say, why did you do this? It feels accusatory. It feels um, aggressive. Yep, it's like an attack. Mm -hmm. Always. And so the why question should never be used uh, when it comes to uh, asking questions. Hmm. Because immediately if it's a personal question, it will feel like an attack. 
And when we feel attacked, we are definitely not going to um, stop. Uh, there will be a comeback, and that will be automatic. And that's what we want to rule out, automatic behavior. Yeah. There's so much here that we can uh, talk a little bit about, but we do have to take another break. This is A Flay Ministry. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host. We are here on the BBM Global Network and Tune in Radio. Stay tuned because we got a bunch more to talk about. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the Word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard owner and CEO of House Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Welcome back. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for A Flame Ministry here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And my guest is Renee Kampstra, um, a world ranging coach, uh, taught, uh, coached, and worked with clients in 28 countries and focuses on communication, leadership, personal development, corporate growth, uh, and we're talking about communication, especially that part of communication called listening. And Renee, you just talked about four th- things that, as the listener, that um, we can try not to use as a response uh, and or a way to do things. And one was to write down three things every day in a, a notebook or something that are good about somebody uh, and to respond with, uh, I feel, or uh, I'm just wondering why, uh, or, um, you know, the an I message. Um, when this happens, I feel like you're made uh, type of thing. And instead of blaming and accusing with, um, well, when why don't you ever pick up your clothes type of thing? Um, 
and uh, I'm forgetting one, but the uh, the last one was not asking why. Why do you do it this way? Yeah, that's an accusation. Instead, maybe something like, I would appreciate trying to understand better how come that happens, or maybe something like that. But even with that, how do we build rapport um, that's one thing we talk about is when we're listening. What? How do you do that? So that's a fantastic question. So thank you for asking that one. I'm going to give you a little story. About seven years ago, I had a friend that told me he would love to introduce me to his billionaire friend because whatever I did, that person would probably have an interest in it. So I said, sure, I'll do that. I went to go to the person. And one thing I know is listening is king. There's no question about it. Whenever I start a conversation with somebody, I always, the very first time, would listen at least 80, even not 90% of the time and leave the rest. All right. So I went there. And, we, and I started asking him a few questions. And when I saw, he, he got really excited about something. So let me give you the secret of seeing that. I saw his eyebrows lift and his eyes became like really glistening, right? Then you know mm-hmm. somebody really loved that question. When mm-hmm. I saw that, I sat back and I listened. And every now and then I would just acknowledge one and a half hours later, oh my goodness. we haven't even started talking about business. Mm-hmm. He just looked at me and he said, Renee, this was probably the best conversation I've ever had in 20 years. And in hmm. my mind, what went through my mind was, did I actually say 10 or 15 words? Mm-hmm. Because I literally just listened. I found the topic that he was passionate about, and he was telling me everything about it. And when he was done telling me, I would just give a comeback of, tell me more. Or Mm -hmm. just lead it to something else where he could just again shine, right? And so I think that gives you the answer to what you were just asking. How do you build rapport? Well, that's the exact same way we build rapport at home or in committee. Because everybody has their own life. Everybody has their own opinion. And if we are just willing to listen, if we are just willing to listen, pretty much what's going to happen is um, we will build that gateway to good relationships with everybody. That is so powerful. You're absolutely right. We have to take another break. This is Flame Ministry here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Stay tuned because we've got more coming with Renee. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. French Rastafarian baker Chef Ugmat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12. 
and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. We are back, and we are a flame ministry on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Padding, your host. My guest today is Renee Kamstra, um, one of the world's top speakers and business coaches, with a primary focus on communication in what she does. And we've been talking about listening. Renee, time is quickly escaping us again. Uh, any last words that you have to share with our listeners? Um, hopefully, they're all really listening. And um, any and how they can get in touch with you if they would like to learn more. Thank you. So, um, I would really want to share one thing. So, how can you listen and actually respond well when you have a total different opinion than somebody else? Uh-huh. It is totally good to have your own perspective or opinion, right? However, what we can do is acknowledge what they say. If we, if we don't agree, do we really have to go into, I don't agree with you and give this big fight versus what you can do is just say, oh, that's an interesting point. That way you, do, you acknowledge what they say. You're not saying something negative about it. And you just allow them to be who they are. And I think that's something that we really need to do as people today. Um, Because if we can just be a little bit more tolerant, life would become a lot smoother and kinder. And uh, I think that that is incredibly important. So for everybody to get a hold of me, my name is Renee Tamstra. It's with one E. So it's R E N E K A Emerson Mary S T R A. And I have ReneeCamstra.com. Obviously, I'm on Facebook. I'm on 
Twitter, I'm on all the social media on LinkedIn, and I'd love to hear from you. And maybe, um, you know, when Kathleen posts this, if you can put some questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you because I'm really passionate about all of this. If you ever want to phone me and leave a message, um, my number is 201-920-9288. Kathleen, thank you so much for having me on the show. Oh, Renee, it's always a delight to have you here. And because Renee has been on the show before, and you can see uh, what we talked about on the first show. It's show number uh, 112, if you go to boldbravemedia.com and look for that show under A Flame Ministry. And uh, that was on emotions, feelings, and leadership. And then this will be posted as show number 124. So if you want to go back and re-listen to that. Um, So, Renee, thank you so much. Um, And to all of you who are listening, thank you for being here today. And I close the show each time with asking, suggesting that we always all do two things. One is find three things today that we're grateful for or that have gone okay during the day. Kind of like Renee was talking about, you know, three things about somebody uh, who we're working with or in a relationship with that are we're happy about or are good things about them. Three things that are good about your day. And at least three. And then one way to share a little bit of God's love with someone else. Now, these can be things like the sun is shining today or, oh, we finally got some rain. Um, it's cool or it's warm, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, it doesn't have to be monumental, but focus on those good things, something good for your day. And then a smile to share with someone saying thank you, listening. That would be a good thing to share with somebody every single day. But those are ways that we can share and keep going forward. And so I invite you all to come back next week for another show. And until then, God's blessings be with each and every one of you. Until we meet again. This has been a Flame Ministry with your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Tune in each week as Kathleen guides you through the many challenges that face our faith-based communities today as she ignites the ministry of your faith community so that more people can hear the message of God's love on Kathleen Panning's A Flame Ministry. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.